Today, I'm going to talk about real estate investment strategies. There are many, many strategies. As you can see on the left-hand side, there is fix and flips. Fix and flip is to buy an old house, fix it up, add value, and then flip it for a profit. There is wholesaling, which is to buy a huge block and then split it up, sell retail. House hacking, ways and tricks to improve the the valuation of the property. There is a live-in and then rent, which is to live in a part of the house while you rent it out to another part. That's how I started my first uh, apartment. I stayed in one room and then rent out another room. And live-in flip, tough, where you live in a part of a big house and then you renovate the rest of the house. And then as you move on, then you move rooms. It's quite tough living. Okay, that's because you want to save up on rental. Then number six is the B, 4R strategy, which is buy, refurb, remortgage or refinance, rent it out for cash flow and then recycle the money. Buy, short term, buy and hold, which is to buy a property, appreciate in value three to five years time, sell it. Okay, and then buy another property at a higher price. In Singapore, because you're not allowed to buy multiple property, then this is called asset progression. Long-term buy and hold, which is what I advocate because of capital gains tax in many of the developed countries, is better to buy and then hold to death. Debt snowball, which is to not pay off your debt, usually get an interest-only loan, and then when the price of the property goes up, you refinance at a higher debt, and then you take out all your money, um, it is also risky if it's negative cash flow. So make sure that you have a high enough rental yield. And that's only achievable in countries where the yields are very, very high versus the borrowing cost. All cash plan, usually you buy a property with problems in the auction, pay all cash, and then refurb it, and then refinance, take out all your money after lifting your value or to flip it. Trade up plan, asset progression, buy cheap, small, and then uh, capital appreciate, sell it, and then buy another one, and then after a couple of years, sell it as well. Hard money lending is um, actually very high interest rates, no questions asked, fast money. It could be between 1% a month to 1.5% a month. Discounted notes, if you want to buy a uh, borrow at 500 thousand dollars worth to do your purchase and then you you actually get four hundred at the end of one year or two years you have to pay back five hundred thousand dollars this is quite similar to uh hard money lending syndications is like jv where let's say for example there are five uh investors uh, each one is 20 percent each but you lead the syndication so um you may the leader may earn sweat equity you only come out with 10 percent of the money and then you get 20 percent share REITs is a passive investing you get about seven to ten percent uh, return per year so using multiple strategies we look at flip title splits which is actually like a bit like wholesaling conversions change of use where you get paper gains uh b4r strategy there are different asset classes offices retail industrial, commercial, residential. Here's an example. The easiest is buying from a developer. Okay, Oftentimes, uh, it is at a premium. So take, for example, in this case in Manchester, the property is 343,000 pounds. Internal is 780 square foot. The per square foot is 440 pounds. We are using property data on, the, on this side the data in the surrounding area so it's important to get the comps so average per square foot is 329 the premium you're paying 440 versus 329 is 33.7 percent the average gross rent as you can see here is only 1283 so you always need to cross check the average price in the area is 288,000 versus Three for three thousand. The premium is already nineteen point one percent. So what about the rent? The annual rent is fifteen thousand three nine six pounds. The lettings fee, if you deduct off twelve percent, is one eight four eight 
service charge, which is the maintenance conservancy fees, or in US it's called, they call it HOA, which is the Homeowners Association. Net rent will be 10548 Purchase price 343000 Stamp duty 17150 Legal still 1005 Total cost 362650 Net rent only 2.93%. So imagine if you will take a mortgage, 75% at 5% interest, assuming no down valuation. In many countries where you buy off plan, you may pay, pay at £343,000 in Australia, for example. When it comes to drawing down your loan, the valuation might only be 280000 So you get a root shock and then you have to pay more. So interest cost 12863 Let's see if it's cash flow positive. It's actually negative here. So total deposit needed is 10400 Return on the equity is negative 2.2%. That is not a good return at all. So... Go one step further. Why don't you buy an existing apartment? So there are 960 for sale if you do a right move comparison. That is oversupply. You want as few as possible. So imagine that you are in a pub and you want to pick a girl or guy and then you, you know, in the pub. If you're a guy, you don't want to see 20 guys who are tech billionaires in their area. So And then there's only two girls. It's too tough, right? So... You want to be the only one for sale, and in this case, 960. So, 125,000 pounds you can get versus 343. I found something here. So, only 125,000 pounds is 764 square foot, is only 164 per square foot. So, how's that for a comparable? So, in this case, uh, buying an existing apartment, um, the annual rent is 15,804, lettings fee 1896, service charge 2005. Uh, net rent 11,408 purchase price 150,000 pounds only net stamp duty 7,500 legals 2005 total cost 160 uh, net rent 7.1 percent how's that much better right next how about going one step further you know you need to buy what is rare so why don't you buy a house a terrace so in this case 270,000 pounds 894 square foot is 302 pounds per square foot. Estimated rent 16,536 per year. Management fee 1,984. No service charge for houses because you control your your own expenses. Net rent 14,552. Purchase price 270. Stamp duty 9,250. Legals 2,005. Refurbish 10,000. Total cost 291. Return on asset cap rate is 4.99%. How's that for a number? So mortgage, 75% loan to value ratio at 5%. You're paying 208575 So for example, back to here, you paid 270000 and you paid all cash. Okay, you paid all cash and then you do a little bit of renovation. So six months later, you bring it to a bank for valuation to get your money out. And the valuation is a bit higher at 278100 because six months later, reval 3% capital appreciation, you get 208575 So your interest is 10429 Net profit after interest is 4123 Equity built up is 83175 Return on equity is 4.5%. Nine six percent, and capital appreciation is nineteen four six seven. You assume seven percent capital appreciation. Return on capital invested, which uh, is return on equity, is the rent plus the capital appreciation it divided by eighty three thousand one seven five, which is the money left behind, which is the equity is twenty eight point four percent. How's that? So all over the world, houses are appreciating faster than apartments. As you can see on over here, studies done in UK, the, a detached house appreciated 24.7%. That's about 11% per year from 2000 to 22. 2022, semi-detached is 22.1%, which is about 9% a year. Terraces appreciate 21.2%, which is about 9% a year. Whereas flats only appreciated 9%, which is roughly about 4% per year.